nestled in the foothills of Northern California, is a community college like no other. Through a unique combination of vision and determination, Butte College is the first college in the world to produce more electricity from solar power than it uses. The journey to become grid positive began in 2004 when the leadership at the college investigated how generating clean, renewable solar power could not only save the college money, but be a perfect fit for their sustainability goals. But there were many challenges. They had to develop a novel financial solution that was comprised of existing funds, bonds, rebates, and commercial loans. Find key partners who could bring together the necessary design, technology, and construction, and weave sustainability goals and student participation throughout the project. The college's solar arrays were developed in three phases. The first two included 10,000 solar photovoltaic panels, but it fulfilled less than half of the college's energy needs. It was the third and most ambitious phase that will be the focus of this video that launched Butte College into the record books as the first grid-positive college on the planet. The first part of the design was to calculate just how much power the college would need as it required estimating future energy demands for the entire campus, including the new LEED certified buildings, along with savings from lighting retrofits and other planned improvements. Running this whole energy balance and making an estimate on to what our needs are and how, just how much PV to put in um, is pretty unique. Phase 3 added an additional 15,000 panels to the campus, bringing the total power generation capacity to 4.55 megawatts DC. But just where to put the panels was a key consideration. They needed to complement the power generation from the existing arrays and be close enough to where the power would be used to maximize energy efficiency. Design criteria such as wind loads, distance from nearby buildings, access, and seismic requirements all added to the complexity of the array design. And throughout the project, the design had to be flexible. The work behind me to my left is a result of uh, modifying system sizing throughout the design phase in order to come up with a system size that's uh, going to be adequate for the meter that it serves. The total cost of Phase 3, less rebates, came to $14,917,990. How to pay for a project of this size during a weak economy was as great a challenge as the design and construction. If you're looking to finance something like this, you have to not only get all the permits, but you have to figure out what kind of rebates you can get. The rebates are extremely important and again that return on investment, just knowing how long it's going to take to be able to get your investment back before you actually start making money is very key in all of this. Another large source of funding came from the federal government through a program called CREBS. CREBS stands for Clean Renewable Energy Bonds. CREBS were created under the stimulus and are a subsidy program that helps buy down the interest rate and makes these projects more cost effective. They're eligible for renewable energy projects that generate electricity, like the solar projects here at Butte College. While the weekend economy did make financing more complex, it did have at least one positive effect on the project. Costing of this, when we did the first two phases, we thought phase three would run at least $40 million, and, which is huge and just not affordable, but through different uh, factors, uh, pricing on construction has come down, cost of materials has come down. Uh, substantially we're able to uh, uh, put some viability to doing this. In total, the cost for all three phases came to 33.8 million, less the 6.5 million in rebates for a total net cost of 27.3 million dollars, an amount that will be repaid many times over. Key partnerships with Bank of America, Pacific Gas and Electric, and the State of California made the financing of Phase 3 possible, but the college selected local contractors Chico Electric and DPR Construction to actually build the arrays. Weekly meetings between the college and all the key contractors ensured that, despite one of the rainiest seasons in recent history, 
the project stayed on track. You have to work truly as a team. A project team is just not a term. It's an actual way that we do business. And the district has been very understanding with some of the challenges that we've gone through. I am an alumnus of the college and it has been very gratifying to see this project through and it's been rewarding also from the fact that other students got involved and, and been able to teach them and educate them about uh, installations of solar. Sustainability is included in the college's mission statement, values, and is a strategic initiative. It is an integral part of the college's curriculum and is the central component of its Green Building Certificate and Clean Energy Workforce Training programs. Several graduates received valuable hands-on experience working on Phase 3. You know, what really excited me about this program was uh, all the opportunities for different types of careers. I chose to be, to become a solar panel installer and chase the electrical field. You know, everything about electric just really got me excited, uh, the testing, the installing, uh, the idea of, of, green, of green technologies and producing power through a renewable source. Just everything about this job it has really excited me and this program and I owe it all to Butte College. Butte College students take the lead role in the management of the Sustainability Resource Center that serves as a hub for information on green living. And the new solar capacity has given students a unique sense of pride. I think one of the problems that California Community Colleges run into with their student populations, given the fact that they are here for so many different reasons and from so many different demographics, is being able to generate that sense of pride and unified community on campus. But here at Butte, since we've put in the solar panels and the National Achievement of Going Grid positive, um, across the board I've really noticed an overwhelming response of, oh hey, that, that's my school, I go there, and, and we did that. The Chico Center covered parking structure was the first to get underway. Once the parking lot was cleared and secured, crews began drilling 10-foot deep holes to anchor the main supports. Crews then assembled an intricate lattice of steel that became the foundation for the solar panels. And just getting to this point proved challenging. Logistically, it was a challenge. We're dealing with an occupied campus. We're dealing with students, staff, faculty, uh, traffic. Uh, you know, foot traffic, vehicle traffic, equipment traffic. So every day had its own challenge on, on where we can be, where we couldn't be. The solar panels for each of the 13 array sites needed to be installed one by one onto the framework, requiring the orchestration of a large workforce. Heavy duty inverters that convert the panel's DC current to usable AC were carefully installed and tested. Finally, workers snaked miles of copper wire through carefully bent electrical conduit to make the hundreds of connections between the panels and the inverters. The outdoor space at the center of the campus underwent the most dramatic change. Once the site of old portable classrooms, it has now become a beautiful central gathering place for students and faculty, providing both solar power and shade. But before power could begin to flow from the panels to the grid, detailed plans were submitted to PG&E and... PG&E reviews that, makes sure that it's going to fit within their system, make sure they don't have any issues with it. And then once we're complete with it, they come out and do a final inspection. And as each array passed inspection, the switches were flipped... That's it. ...and clean power began to flow. Along with a 10-year performance warranty by the installer and a lifespan that may well go beyond 30 years, one of the best parts of solar generation is the relatively maintenance-free operation. Preventative maintenance of the systems will consist of yearly checks of the combiner boxes, electrical conductors, and solar inverters. To avoid power generation loss, the district is analyzing if ongoing cleaning of the panels that do not have their own watering system will be necessary. Along with the many awards and early commitments to sustainability, with the completion of Phase 3, Butte College has become a role model for other higher education facilities across the country. It has proven that solar power is profitable even after subtracting all installation and financing costs, the solar arrays will save the district approximately $130 million during the next 30 years. 
These savings will be the result of the elimination of an electricity bill, getting paid for excess power generation, and avoiding future rate increases. But it is where those savings go that really matter. I think of all of the students that are coming to school and the amount of money that we are going to be able to put back into their education because we're saving money on not spending it on utilities. That's probably bigger than anything. The college's arrays will keep more than 6.9 million pounds of carbon dioxide and between 20 to 27,000 pounds of nitrogen and sulfur dioxide from being pumped into the air every year. There is little doubt that Butte College's solar arrays will continue to be a source of not only clean, renewable energy, but also of revenue and pride for the college for decades to come.